Got a job for you. Oh, but it's half turn. Mum. There's a pound in it for you both. Oh, Brill! What do we have to do? I need some stuff from the post office. Here's a list. Easy money. Come on, Andy. Actually, I don't feel like it. I'll stay here. Oh, come on, it's only down the shop. Nothing. What's going on? I've got a bit of an headache. Well, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, it's nothing. Oh well, forget it. I'll pop down there at lunchtime. No, don't worry. I'll go. There's someone I want to see in the village anyway. More coffee. Mm. Thanks for staying over. No problem. Not that I got much sleep. No, me neither. <laughs> Keep thinking back to the night of the robbery. I feel such a fool. Steve made sure I'd be here, so I'd be his perfect alibi. It's a bit of a high-risk strategy. That's why it's so clever. Steve disappears upstairs for half an hour, and it never even occurs to me that he could be somewhere else. Hang on, aren't we letting our imaginations run away with us a bit? Cathy's identified him. That's the only explanation. <sighs> but what if she's confused? I mean, what if it's a false memory brought on by the concussion? Why? Why would Cathy accuse Stephen? She was absolutely certain. Cathy isn't malicious kind. I think you have to face it, Kim. Steve did it. No. Oh, Kim. I have done a lot of bad things. But when I married Steve, I thought, this is it. I'm safe. I don't have to fight and cheat and scheme anymore. I know. All this time. He must have despised me so much. You couldn't have known. So he... Why did I marry him? Breakfast. I'm afraid it's only tea and a croissant. The kitchen's still in a bomb site. And come on, eat up. I'm not hungry. Oh, come on, you've got to eat something. Oh, this thing smells of smoke. Oh, come on, it's not like you. We've got things to do. Well, what would they be? Well, like phoning the insurance for one. Well, what's the point? By the time the money comes through, the malt shovel will have got on my trade. Oh, it's hopeless, Trisha. All pack's finished. Well, you can't just lie around in your pyjamas all day. Well, why not? After all, I am a publican. And although it may have escaped your notice, I no longer have a pub. Morning, Mrs. Marchant. What's happened? <laughs> I have a warrant to search your property. Fine. Just try not to make too much of a mess. Take upstairs. You're rather back. Yeah. Come on, sweetheart. Let's get your coat. I'll be back. Bye bye. I appreciate your cooperation, Mrs. Marchant. Uh, look, Inspector. Perhaps I can save you a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. Steve's work diary, address book, floppy disks. They're all yours. The best man should be of harmonious disposition, tactful, witty, and sober. <laughs> sober? I don't know, I'm sober when I enter the drink. A level headed problem solver ready to take on a Married of important tasks. Oh, well, your first task can be to go into Horton and get me some plugs. What now? Talking about her butcher's nuptials. He's done, not in front of Lisa. Go on. Make yourself scarce. I hope you know what you're doing. How come we do that? Oh, no, no, you stare at me till I've done with you, lad. Lisa? Look, sit down. The wool pack in the village hall. Well, I've checked it out. Grandad, I mean Alan, can easily extend his licence to cover this place. Hmm. Well, it's just until he gets the pub done up again. A few weeks. I don't know. Well, Emmerdale needs its pub. It's the heart of the village. And my granddad needs it too. He's a broken man without the wool pack. Well, that's all very lovely, but um, what's in it for me? Or rather the village hall, financially speaking. Well, name your price. 30% of all profits. To go to village hall funds, of course. Done. 
<laughs> Thank you, Vicar. You don't know what this means. Look, um, I know why you're worried. I did fancy Armandy. But that was ages ago. Are you sure? Yeah. It's just that well, you seem very keen to marry Mandy. Too keen for my liking. I want to get us back in our home. You, me, me dad. I'm doing it for family. Well, maybe it's time the family did something for you and tried to find another way out of this mess. Look, Lisa, I know you mean well, but it's about time you and me dad stopped treating me like a kid. So I'd let me make my own decisions. Nobody's an adult when it comes to love and feelings and broken hearts. I know. Oh, look, I really, really wish I were marrying someone that loved me. You will one day, love. I know you will. But they're not exactly queuing round the corner, are they? Are they? So I might as well do something useful, aren't I? I mean, how long do you want to be sleeping at Betty's, eh? OK, Butch. I'll be OK. I will. Have you found the insurance? No, I was thinking of it. Well, I've got some great news. Yeah? The vicar said that we can use the village hall as a temporary pub, just until we get the wool pack done up again. Really? Well, I found the brewery and they said it's easy. you just got to apply for one of those thingy things. An occasional licence. That's the one, just like you would for a village fete. And I thought, while we're organising all that, we'll make things a bit more comfy up here. I'll move into Terry's room and we'll use the big room as a temporary lounge. Oh, Tricia, I honestly don't think I've got the energy for all that. What, moving a bit of furniture? No, 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 I'm, I'm in the wool pack. Well, I know it's hard, but why don't you look at what's happened as an opportunity? Every cloud has a silver lining. Oh, come on, you know as well as I do, the wool pack was well overdue for a facelift. With the insurance money, you can breathe new life into the place. Yeah. Yes, you may be right. So you'll phone the insurance then? Yes, I will. And then I'll phone the architect. Oh, that's better, Grandad. Thank you, my dear. You know, um, this village hall thing? Well, it wasn't my idea. Huh? No? Don't shout at me, Grandad, but it was Terry's. He was the one who suggested I went to the vicar. I would rather you didn't discuss the affairs of the wool pack with Terry. Oh, but he was only trying to help. Yeah, and use you to curry favour with me. I'm so disappointed in him. Oh, but Grandad... Trisha, I, I know you only meant to help, but you must understand that there is no way Terry will worm his way back into the wool pack. Dad? Hey, Any chance for a few more boxing tips? <sighs> what have I told you? Not while your dad's around. Do you want to get me thrown out? But what if I meet the kid in the village? Listen, you've got what it takes. So unless you're six foot two and fifteen stone, you're nothing to worry about, have you? No, it's nothing like that. Right then. So all you need is confidence and nerve. Once you've shown him what you're made of, he won't push you around again. Right. Thanks, Ned. Hey, Robert. Yeah. If he's giving you too much trouble, don't be afraid to get your retaliation in first. You know what I mean? So why'd you tell Al it was my idea? I had to do something to make it up to you. What do you mean? Come off it, Terry. You know as well as I do. The fireworks, the lock-in. It was all down to me. Well, I were in charge. I could have stopped it at any time. Yeah, well, the least I could do was try and get your job back even if he did nearly go ballistic at me for suggesting it. Thanks. <laughs> Oi, Donna! What do you want? I want you to leave Andy alone. I don't know what you're talking about. You and Chelsea. I've seen you giving him hassle. So what? You're just a pair of bullies. Let him fight his own battles. It's supposed to be so hard. Leave him alone, or else. Or else what? You're going to hit with your handbag? <laughs> I'm warning you. Ooh, Mummy, I'm so scared. Not. Get lost. Didn't think boys were supposed to be afraid of girls. <sighs> ah!
Here, Sal, you done us a big favour when you blew up the wool pack. We're coining it in. Yeah, I better make an extra order for booze when any out. Yeah, well, I wouldn't book your holiday in the Bahamas just yet. Wool pack will be reopening sooner than you think. Yeah, well, it take months to get a place sorted out. No, Trish has got a deal with the vicar. They're going to be setting up a temporary wool pack in Village Hall. If you ask the committee, it sounds dodgy to me. Well, listen, the best part is that Trish told Al that it was my idea. And was it? Well, she's doing me a favour, trying to get me back in with him. Donna! Oh, my God! What's happened, love? Come here, let me look at you. Oh, Donna, what have you done? Hey, James. Right, how are you doing? Right. Rough night. What do you think? Yes, it's hard to sleep with a guilty conscience. I told you before, I've got nothing else to say. Well, we've searched your house, we've got all your papers. I'm sure we'll find out everything we need to know eventually. Then why are you wasting your time talking to me? Shouldn't you be out there catching lager louts or something? I'm glad you've still got a sense of humour, because the evidence against you is piling up. We've already got enough to send you down for years. You, bankrupt Stephen Marchant, arrested, trying to leave the country with £10,000 in your pocket. The woman you tried to run down in cold blood has identified you. I don't envy anyone trying to put up a defence against that kind of evidence. Please confine yourself to questioning my client. This is not going to look good in court. Look, why hold out? Cooperate now, you could halve your sentence. You see, I just keep thinking there's something more to this whole thing. There's something I'm missing. Hello, Viv. Nice to see you up here. Oh, I don't think so. What's going on? My little Donna is lying bruised and bleeding in our front room. Oh, I'm sorry. How are you? What kind of mother are you bringing up your lad to hit innocent little girls? What are you talking about, Andy? Minding her own business, she was, and your boy Robert came up and smashed her in the face. Robert? Practically knocked her out. I think there has to be some kind of misunderstanding. Well, I want compensation and an apology, otherwise I'm calling the police. Let me go and find Robert, get his side of the story, then I will come down to the village and I'm sure we can sort this out. Talking's no use. What he needs is a good hiding. That'll teach him not to go throwing his fists around. I think I'd better go and find Robert. Ned! What the hell have you been playing at? Chris. Sorry, I know you need those projections. I'll have them with you in an hour, I promise. It's nothing to do with that. No? It's Kim. Ah. I'm going to enjoy this. Now, run me through the list of charges, slowly. Then I can work out roughly how long she'll be behind bars. Well, they've charged Steve. He's in custody. Marvellous. Now, how about Kim? They've let her go. Well, I wasn't expecting them to refuse a bail, what with James... No, Chris, you don't understand. They're not going to charge her. Chris? Chris? I hope you've got a good explanation for this. Donna Windsor's been getting on my nerves. She's a real pain. You do not hit girls full stop. Sexist. What? I thought I was supposed to treat girls the same as boys. Well, don't hit boys either. Oh, so I'm not even allowed to defend myself anymore. Andy, what do you know about this? Don't look at me. I've been in the house all morning. Right, you're grounded for the rest of half term. Mum. And no pocket money. Till when? Till I say. It's not fair. Now, go into the house before I really lose my temper. Come back inside, Chris. It's too cold to sit out here. Can't believe it, Laura. She slipped through the net again. There's nothing you can do. It's a matter for the police now. What do they know? It's time to let go, Chris. I can't. Not while she's still around. I feel so damned helpless. Then let go. Why torture yourself? You're right. Maybe I should leave Emmerdale. Get this whole place, everything she's done, out of my mind. But if you leave, then she'll have won. Do you want that? 
No. I don't think I can bear this anymore. Every day, seeing her, constantly reminding me. You're tearing yourself apart, Chris. You have to let this go. give her a test of her own medicine. What did she do to you? Don't be stupid. I've seen the way her and Chelsea are bullying you. Bullying me? The girls. I can take care of them. No, you can't. I've seen them getting at you. Well, you're wrong. I don't need your help. I was doing you a favour. Only in future, keep your big nose out of my business. Stop it. I don't need any girl to stick up for me, especially you. Hey, break it up, you two, right now. Now, what's all this about? Fine, if that's the way you want it, go up to your rooms and stay there. Till I say so. What's going on? I don't know what's got into these two. Although I have a horrible feeling that maybe I do. I... Hi. Look. Here's Steve. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What do you bring James for? He was missing you. I'm missing you too, big man. Mm. Come on. Why don't you go and play in your house? See you toys in the house. Here you go. Mummy and Steve have got to talk. Spalding told me to search the house. I don't think they found anything. But they took all your stuff. I've been worried sick about you. They're watching me. I know it. Just waiting for me to make a mistake. I never thought I'd say this, but it's pretty scary. It's all my fault. No. Yes, it is. I mean, it was that bright idea was it to steal the horse in the first place? I knew what I was doing when I got involved. We're in this together, Steve. That's the problem. Spaulding's looking for an accomplice. <sighs> He's bluffing. They don't have anything. It's only a matter of time. But calm down. No, Kim, listen to me. I'm going to plead guilty. What? Wait, hear me out. If I make a statement, if I cooperate with them, it'll reduce my sentence and it'll take the heat off you. Are you mad? Look, Kathy's identified me. I'm going down anyway. You don't know that. Yes, I do. If I say I acted alone, they won't be able to touch you. I'll get two years maximum. I'll be out in 18 months, maybe 12. We'll still have the money. We can be together again, you, me, James. You don't have to do this, Steve. I've been lying awake in my cell at night thinking about that little fella. You know I love him, Kim. I can't let them take his mother away from him. What about you? He needs you too. When I lost your money, you could have walked out that door and never come back. It's my turn to stand by you and James. I love you, Kim. I love you too, Steve. Why do I sing my song so loud? Cos I want to, cos I want to. Someone's happy. Hey, I'm not just happy, Picker. I'm really happy. I'm very pleased for you. Can you keep a secret? It's in the job description. Look, I shouldn't really tell you this, but if I don't tell someone, I'm, I'm going to explode. I'm listening. I'm getting married. Splendid! That's wonderful news. Who's the lucky woman? Well, if I tell you, do you promise you won't tell anyone else? Well, uh, weddings are usually rather public affairs. You might have a problem keeping a lid on this one. Do you promise? Trust me, I'm a vicar. 
Robert told me he was being bullied. And when I told you that I didn't want you boxing with the boys, I meant exactly that. I was just teaching him self-defence, Jack. You don't even grow up soft, dear. Everyone thinking he's a pushover. If the kids have a problem, they come to us. Or a teacher, they know that. Ah, rubbish. That mamby-pamby stuff's no good. Oh, and smashing a girl in the face is. I don't think so. Will you watch my lips, Ned? No boxing. All right, then. I'll pack my things. What? I'll leave. I know I'm not wanted here. Don't be daft. It's not that. It's just... You can't tell us how to bring up our kids. It's for the best. Well, you do need to find your own place, you're right, but we're not going to chuck you out in the fields. Oh, you can stay here till you find somewhere else. Another couple of weeks will be fine, won't it, Jack? Yeah, a few more days. Thanks. So let me get this straight. Um, you're marrying your cousin, Mandy, so you can get the money to buy your old house. That's it. It's brilliant, isn't it? Butch, how can I put this? Marriage is a holy sacrament. What's that? You make vows before God, and a loveless marriage displeases him. Who? God. Oh. And from what I hear, they're not much fun either. Yeah, but this is going to be different. You see, this, this won't be a loveless marriage. But you just said that... I know. But this is the most secret bit. You see, I really do love Mandy. I've always loved her. She's magic. Does Mandy love you? No. Not yet. But she will. Uh -huh. you, you see, I'm going to be the perfect husband. I'll look after her. I'm going to get a job, and we might even get his own place. And I won't let her down. You know, in the bedroom department. Have you had many girlfriends, Booch? Sort of. Never found the right person. Well, you could say that. But, but, but Monday's different, Vicar. See, Monday's one of us. She's a dingle. I know that people in this village think that I'm a clown. But I've never been more serious in my life. I've got so much love to give her. I'd do anything for her. I'll make her love me. Hang on. Uh, does Mandy know how you feel? No. Butch, listen to me. No, but, but, but it doesn't matter. You see, in six months' time, Mandy Dingle is going to be the happiest wife in the Dales.